Hello and welcome to Mini Discoveries. Today we are going to look at more signs of spring, but this time it's flowers. The first one, which is definitely in flower now, is the snowdrop. And you definitely don't need me to describe a snowdrop, so I'll just put up some pretty pictures. They are the absolute sign of spring here in the UK, but weirdly, they are not native. But before you get your invasive species removal shovel out, they are naturalised. They were recorded as growing in gardens back in the 16th century and reported growing wild, jumping forward to the 18th century. It's thought that the wild ones are garden escapes, and by escape I'm hoping you're not imagining snowdrops getting up and running away, could be excess bulbs that are thrown over the fence, soil transferred off-site, very potential limited spread via seeds. Most of the snowdrops will reproduce by division of the bulbs, but if there are enough pollinators around early in the season, they can get pollinated and produce seeds. So potentially there could be a bit of spread that way. Really weird thing that I found out about snowdrops making this video, no petals. They do not have petals, technically. Those fancy white things that look definitely like petals are actually tepals. What are tepals? Let's take a very brief diversion into plant biology. Many of the flowers you're familiar with will have the sexual parts in the centre, then covering layers around them, known as whorls. The inner layer, or whorl, is known as the corolla, and is made up of the often brightly coloured petals with which you'll be familiar. The outer whorl, known as the calyx, is made up of sepals, which are usually green and leaf-like structures. None of this is the case in snowdrops, where the whorls are not separated into two different types of structure. Instead, the uniform whorls are known as the perianth, and are made up of structures called tepals. So snowdrops have six tepals. You've got the three outer ones, which are the long, thin, white ones, and then the three inner ones, which are also white, kind of shorter, and often have some sort of green blob or colouring on the end. I honestly cannot say, hand on heart, that I will not keep calling them petals. Sorry. The next plant spot is the winter aconite. This is a very small growing member of the buttercup family, and as you would expect, it has that buttercup-shaped flower, yellow petals, bright. Like all the flowers featured in this video, they can be a valuable source of nectar for early emerging invertebrates, such as bumblebees. And like the snowdrop, this is not a native species, although it is naturalised and growing, well, many, many places. Originally from mainland Europe, places like Italy, Bulgaria, it's like southern Europe area, it was introduced around about the 16th century and was spotted growing wild and kind of naturalised by the 18th century. So it's been here a while and it's very nice. When you're looking for all these flowers, be sure to keep an ear and an eye out for invertebrates, for pollinating insects. I did spot one in the garden just before recording this. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what it is, but if you zoom in enough, you can just about tell that I should have gone over and actually had a look what it was, rather than trying to film it in low light conditions. Never mind, live and learn. That is it for today's episode of Mini Discoveries. Next week, we will be doing something else. Enjoy. Bye.